See, Papa Z's on. Her you're, page is on. You're now. brighter than me. <clears throat> Yo. What's up, Papa Z? I'm gonna go wee. I'm gonna go wee. I'm gonna go wee. Oh, I don't have us on our TV. Let me do that. Oh my god, we. We. Ugh, Donald's here. You know what? I want to down like this. You do that. You can sleep outside in the snow. Hey, Vineyard. Is it Vineyard? Yeah, Vineyard. I'm trying to think of how to say that word. I don't it's know. Vineyard. I'm brain, I'm brain farting. You're a Vineyard. It's Vineyard. 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 Right? Vineyard? Is it Vineyard? I think it is Vineyard. Uh, she said she enjoyed the Gorelite setup, and we have beautiful goats. They like our goats. Belle's going to be excited. Actually, it might be Leia. Leia's the excitable one. Thank you. I love my goats. I was not planning to be a goat owner, and then Donald bought me goats on a surprise, and now I can't get enough of them. And then I happened. Well, I love them. Now we got six. We started with two, and then one died a horrible, horrible death. That still gets me in the in the hearts, but I do love all our goats. They're really cute. There we are. Now I'm on my TV. We have to redo this this whole picture thing. It just doesn't work for me. This is all Dad's doing. All right, so I posted it around. I remembered this time. I pre-scheduled it to give people some heads up. I feel organized and ready to go, even though I'm not. And I got my my Mary's heirloom seeds ready. Dark side said, ew, ew, dark side, it. ew. So dark sided. <sighs> dark side, you dark crack me up. Dark side. Thorhaven Farm, what's up? My friend, my, my, my fellow heathen, Papa Z, of course you have to say, oh, not us. Dark side said it's not us, that's you. Oh, well then I'll show that. I don't know. Sometimes I feel pretty ew some days, to be quite honest. I felt you today. I felt old today. Let's put it that way. Another great night. You had a great night? Hey Catalina. I'm trying to open mail and it's not working. I wonder what's ew. It could be these pictures. These pictures are kind of ooh, the way they're said. Uh, well, what's what's ooh, dark side? I tell you what, we were playing cards with dad earlier because my dad lives with us. And there was some <laughs> aerial bombing. There was, there was some ooh. There was some ooh for sure. <laughs> All right, I think I got this finally open. Are you good? I had to open it to do the, well, I mean, this is how I open mail, guys. Like, is this yeah. I'm impatient. So I'll give people a little bit more time to show up and hang out a little bit for an hour. That's pretty much what we do on our lives is just hang out and sometimes we'll talk about something. My brother just popped a shaving cream water balloon. All right. Yeah. I haven't played with water balloons in forever. It's starting to snow here. I'm kind of excited. So I only had one snow so far this winter here in Pennsylvania. So uh, my Alabama farm life. Alabama Someone farm we know life. is driving through there. Oh, yes. Uh, Big Bear Homestead's driving through Alabama right now on the way home from Arkansas visiting Roots and Refuge, um, which was on their live last night. What time is it there? It is nine here in Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania, I guess. Yeah. But we go live every Sunday night at this time. I used to play music. Um, I play guitar and sing, so I would play like, some Johnny Cash and stuff. But hey, Kim. But I stopped playing music once we got enough followers on YouTube. Well, now we just have to get watch hours because YouTube, when I play like Johnny Cash or Green Day or Stained or Leonard Skinner, they because they're copyright songs, they mark our videos copyright. So the watch hours don't count towards our monetization. So I had to go back through all my lives where I was playing music and delete that. Y'all had you at seeds. Yeah. We've got a bunch that we got that we're going to go over. And then we did a seed 
reveal last week from Baker Creek. I want to get more from Baker Creek, but they're out of the ones I want. I watched the video, I actually sent it to you this morning, about a guy that grew turmeric in pots. And I really want to try that this year. Well, I want to grow turmeric in general. I don't care where they grow, as long as they grow. But they're out. Um, what did they say? Do you guys know the band Kiss? I don't mind that one being up. I mean, I know Kiss. I didn't really listen to them growing up. That's actually how my parents met. My mom was underage, <laughs> sneaking into a Kiss concert somewhere down in Baltimore. And she was trying to sneak in like a back window for this concert venue. And my dad pushed her in to help her out on her butt. And that's how my parents met. So that's a weird random story, but there you go. Well, we got Big Bear brought, bought their Nigerian dwarfs. I'm so excited. Nigerian dwarfs are so cute. Um, hey, Mama Z. Twin Brook Acres. They can pick up the music even if it's not loaded into the video. Yes. So when I play, I guess they have some kind of sensor that checks and makes sure that music that's playing in a video, like if someone has background music, is copyright material. So when I do play my music, even though it's my like my rendition of Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison is way different than his. Um, I guess it still counts. How old do you have to be to get into a Kiss concert? Well, this was back in the, let's see, this was back in the 70s because my parents got married in 79. So I don't know how old you had to be back then. Nowadays, I mean, there's really no big age thing for concerts, is there? Only if they're serving alcohol. If they're serving alcohol and the venue might have its own age restrictions, but... We ordered some seeds last week, and again this year, a lot of places up here are already out of a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we, we're pretty good on most of our seeds, except for the new stuff I want to grow, especially taking that herbal course from Rosemary, Gladstar. Like, there's new stuff I want to grow I'm going to have to try to get seeds for. Do you know about We Got the Hits? No, what is that? Wow, Modern Tech Big Brother is watching and listening. Yeah. <laughs> You're 10 and want to go. I don't see why you couldn't go to a Kiss concert. I mean, not all venues require alcohol, right? When we went to see Wardruna like two years ago, that was in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. There, I think there was alcohol served there, though, because that bar, the guy with the chain mail that kept yeah. saying, Skull. <laughs> they did have alcohol, but I, yeah. It depends on the venue, I guess. Uh, at age, any age in 79, I believe. Yeah, back in the 70s, I don't think there was a restriction. My sisters and I post our cover songs through them, and there is no copyright issues. Huh. I wonder why I get hit with them then. Well, it's, they post their songs through them. We got the hits. Oh, I see what you're saying. Never mind. Okay. Now, I do have some stuff up on YouTube and our Instagram, like my personal Instagram, not our farm Instagram. Like, I've played that bluegrass song you like from Cold Mountain. I've got, like, a Leonard Skinner song up on YouTube or something. I don't have a lot up on YouTube yet. I'm kind of want to get a couple things done this year. When I get my studio, which I'm now going to call my cottage, um, delivered next month, I am going to have it sort of soundproof so I can start recording music. That's a big thing on my list in the next year or two. Making lemonade from lemons. Hey, Shayla. Oh, Little Garden Big Dreams. Hello from Australia. I think they're in Australia, right? Yeah. So... But other, you know, other than that, we did, what did we do this last week? Donald worked a lot of 2 a.m. shifts. So he worked a lot of overtime. That ate into a lot of our productivity this week. But today we did get like a big building. Like I'm feeling it in my back moved. I think we only moved it, what, eight feet or something? Yeah. We, we, we had but it was it heavy. This is not one you should be lifting at all. So we did yeah. get that moved where we wanted it and cleaned up some wood and stuff. But what that constantly keep it. Yeah, I really like I'm, I'm I'm not sure how to do the recording studio necessarily, but as long as I don't hear the traffic from the road, because a lot of traffic happens on this road and the dog barking, because I plan to do podcasting anyway for my business. I figure why not have an area like start getting equipment and doing like a recording studio, too. I have a friend that actually did the sound for Biden's inauguration, so I might bug him about technical Equipment spec stuff. We'll see. Do you guys have kids? No, we do not have any kids. And I mean, we, we wanted them, but 
it has not happened and we're kind of like reaching the end of that that rope is burning out so we may adopt i don't know like i'm fine with adopting anyway because you know kids need homes cjm hello welcome now we have animals and i take care of my dad my dad lives with us but he's like 70 so a carton foam and deck it all out with some big insulation. Yeah, the insulation that I think we're going with is like the spray foam. It's supposed to block out sound a lot better. Um, the windows are insulated. The floor is insulated. We'll probably put the foam on the roof too, or the ceiling, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually might buy some sound dampening curtains for when I really, really need quiet depends on how much, I guess, depends on how much my mic picks up to put over the windows and my door um, temporarily, like have a little like hook where I can pick it up and put it up there temporarily and then take it down. So I have light in there. We'll see. It's really, you were darker. Yeah, well, I think it's because you got that light on over there. Well, this light's the amber light, remember? Oh, so it's right, not right, as bright. Right. Anyway, if you had kids, what would you name them? We had names picked out, didn't we? But they were kind of weird names. Like one was Arik, Clint, or no, Quint from Gunsmoke. Yeah. And then Thaddeus, I think, yeah. was one. We had weird names picked up for the boys. I don't know that we ever decided on the girl names, to be quite honest. It would probably be something naturey, like tree names or flower names or something. Can't wait to see your she shed. Yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait for you guys to come over and see it. Um, I still want to see if anybody wants to come over and help us move office furniture. So if you guys are into it, I want to see if Matt and E are into it. Hey, Rebel Canners. Then your chick says, we'd love to do a song with you if you'd play or sing on one of our songs. See, that would be awesome. I would love that. Have you actually heard me sing, though? You might not want me to if you heard me sing. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard me or not. I'll have to link you guys something. If I had a girl, I would name her Savannah. Savannah is a really pretty name. I love that. I was actually named after the singer Crystal Gale. Little fact void there. Um, but yeah, I'll link. You sing great. Thanks. I do love singing. I think if I had to pick a genre to sing, it would either be grunge music or bluegrass. Or no, like a. I know my favorite genre I would love to sing is like this. It's kind of like this new kind of movement that's happening in the country music scene where it's like an outlaw country, like Tyler Childers, Coulter Wall type stuff. Oh, I would love that. Named after Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley is a pretty name too. Yeah, she's an actor. Um, air circulation would be just opening windows and some. Yeah, it's got four windows in it, the shed, a, a big glass door to allow light in. And then, yeah, I, I would probably either hang up a net in front of the door and open it in the summertime. I haven't decided yet. Right now I'm trying to think of decorating, how I want to decorate it. But I'm really excited. I was like kind of staring at the shed pad that they installed um, on Friday just to kind of figure out where I want to place everything. <clears throat> it's really dark where you are. Yeah. Well, we don't have very good lighting in this house in general because it's kind of older. And then, of course, it's nighttime. So um, I was named after a weather event. Missy. Oh, that's funny. Donald was like, named after his dad. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do our seed show, show you guys what we got. Now, these are mostly things that we were out of. Um, but we still have a lot of seeds left over to go through. And, I mean, there are still things we want to get, like like I was mentioning, turmeric, ginger. I've never grown ginger. I have yet to have a successful garlic harvest, so I would like to buy some garlic or get some garlic. Hey, Scanner Farms. So, now, Misty, as a um, Misty's one of my moderators, if you could post, there's a link at the top of the description for this video that will highlight um, a deal that Mary's Heirloom Seed, which is where we got these seeds from, we're actually an affiliate for her. So if you use this link to buy seeds or anything regarding this deal that's coming up, then we actually get like a 10% affiliate discount or not discount, I guess affiliate pay for that. 
So um, she's running a deal right now that if you buy $20 or more of seeds this coming week, starting tomorrow, then you get this free. It's a, actually a type of basil I've never heard of. It's a leaf lettuce basil. So it's a really big basil, it looks like, from the pictures. It's a new new seed. So um, what do those seeds do? Like, what do they grow? Well, she has a little bit of everything. So there's my affiliate link, but there's also another one that should be in the description that's a link to that specific lettuce, too, that if you guys want to check that out. Um, we would really love to do a song with you. We would definitely try to find your email. Yeah, it's uh, coppercuttlefarms at gmail.com, so definitely feel free to... Uh, Check that out. If my garlic comes up good this summer, I should have plenty to share. That would be awesome. Yeah, we haven't yet grown garlic. Like, we tried in pots once. It didn't work out so well. Um, so we're going to try some this year. I just got We didn't get to plant any in October, which is when we're supposed to. So we're not going to have any for this year. We'll plant this coming fall. But let's see. Are we so, doing that? Okay. Yeah, I figured it would. I'll go through them and pay attention to the chat and stuff as we go. So one of the things we got, this is Donald's favorite flower. Um, so we get a lot of these because they last so long and they're so pretty. So we got some of the, um, these are giant zinnias okay. of California. So I really like her packaging too because it's biodegradable. Um, but I really love zinnias. I don't know if you guys have ever had zinnias. You plant it a lot. Well, you also, uh, you dried a lot of garlic last year, right? I remember you said your house smelled like garlic. And these are these free? I don't know. I can't tell. Free bee seeds. So I got some borage. Now, borage is one that I tried to grow this year, but again, our garden did not do this well this year at all because we had no rain. I think it's pronounced barrage. You hear a barrage. But I like borage because I read in one of my books that talks about like the 1500 manuscripts about herbal descriptions. It was one that made men happy. It's like an antidepressant type flower. But, um, I really want to grow it because it's also pretty. Big basil leaf sounds really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in trying it. We love zinnias. Grow them in, in front of the windows. Yes. Oh, I want to grow some by my shed. So when I sit there, I see Okay. Them. Hey, Susan. Your bees love borage. Yeah, that's another reason I love to have them. Rainbow Swiss chard. Love some Swiss chard. And I love the color. And that they just continue to grow no matter what. It's not like a cabbage where you grow the cabbage and you're done. It's just prolific, I guess, and really pretty. And it tastes good, too. You fry it up with some garlic in the morning. Some watermelon radish we want to try this year. Have not had that before. I love radishes in general, but Big Bear Hempstead actually told me they started, what was it, pickling radish? Yeah. And he said it was the one of the best things he's ever eaten that's pickled. So I'm interested in trying to pickle some radish this year. Fragile. Yeah, fragile. Must fragile. be French. Oh, they're speaking of which. Been so long since I saw rain. Yeah. We had a really, we had the worst drought this past summer than since 1999, they said. Oh, there's Big Bear. But the speaking of which. I did. I did say Big Bear. I was talking about your uh, pickled radishes that you were eating and you were telling me were really good. Forage can take a bit to get going, but once you have it in the flowers, you'll have it forever in your garden. Perfect. That's what we want. We want things. So, okay, we're fat and lazy. So our goal is to plant a lot of perennials that we don't have to keep planting over and over again. Obviously, tomatoes and stuff, we'll still have to. But the more flowers and herbs that we don't have to keep planting over and over again, then the more fat and happy I can be. So sugar and snap peas. These were really pretty and did really well last year, despite the rain. And I think Donald just ate them off the vine. So. What is that? The sugar and snap pea. Yeah, they, those are really good. Those are really good. Uh, pickled radishes are amazing. Yeah, I'm going to bug Robin. I'm going to bug uh, Mrs. Big Bear about how she pickled those because I want to try some. Um, red burgundy onions. I love onions. I tried. So D over at Naturally NC showed me a video. I think it was her. Of, of uh, MI Gardener. And he did a video where you have like the six slots that are maybe like that square of the planters. And he put all of his seeds in, in those, like every single one. So it was like hundreds of seeds, like 700 seeds in this thing. And that it was a way to grow onions in a small place. And then you, as they get bigger, you would transplant them. Did not work for me at all. I tried it last year. 
at all. It's a bread and butter recipe, so it's like a sweet. Well, and radishes are a little have a little bite to them, so that would that would be interesting. I like bread and butter. You're a bread and butter. You put them on bread. You butter your own bread. Cayenne pepper, one of my absolute favorite herbs right now, and one that I've been doing a lot of study on lately because it acts as a coagulant and an anticoagulant and opens up the blood vessels and just cures what ails you. Isn't that what Pepper said in the cowboy way? Yeah, it'll cure what ails you. So currently my favorite herb, cayenne pepper. Really digging that right now. Pickled radish video, please. Yes. Does she have one, Jason? I'm that's or, Robin. Oh, that's Robin. That's right. Jason's driving. Sorry. I don't know why I keep thinking it's Jason. So Robin, do you have a video on that? Because I would love to see that. Icicle radish. I specifically wanted this one, and I forget why, except I know it's supposed to go really well as a companion plant for one particular plant that way. And I want to say it was maybe tomatoes. Something about this particular radish is a really good companion plant. When I find out and remember, I'll let you guys know. But the white icicle radish, I specifically wanted, and they did pretty good. They're really pretty. I think it was also to help break up soil. It could be. But I think we would probably use the back on that. I bought two this year and haven't tried heat mats yet. Yeah, we have some heat mats from our old seed shelf, but I think they're too long for that one greenhouse that we showed the video for. So we're going to get some, some new ones. Me, big chief, me teach you. <laughs> um, yes. Lazy gardening plants are parsley, borage, lemon balm, ground cherry. Once you have them, you'll never have to replant. Yeah, we're going to do some lemon balm this year too. So Utah celery. Really, I don't eat a lot of celery. I don't like the stringy texture, but I do put it in stews and my chili recipe. The paleo, I put a paleo chili video, right? Yeah. My paleo no bean chili uses celery, so I'm going to grow some this year. Cowboy way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that scene. Yes. I haven't seen that movie in a while. We should watch it. Dad likes that movie, too. Another zinnia mix because zinnia can't have too many. Yeah, celery is hard to start from seed, but we had some started, but again, everything pretty much died anyway. Sweet banana pepper. This is my favorite pepper. This and jalapenos. Um, it's good pepper. Donald likes the bell peppers. Well, yeah, that's a good pepper too. Yeah, I like pickled sweet banana peppers. So. I'm going to try to do a lot of pickling this year. What? They're continuing the... Or maybe she chased naked pale yeah. face woman. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet pea, old spice mix. We're going to try another pea. But celery is easy to grow from the left over base. Stick it in water and watch it grow back. Yeah, I have never tried that. I should try that. So nasturtiums, I want to do a lot of this year. Not only plant it with my zucchinis as a companion plant or like a trap crop, um, but also because it's edible. And I want to do some more edible salads and like make it more colorful, I guess, with the nasturtiums and like dandelions and stuff. And let me tell you, I've been reading up on dandelions lately. Did you know that there's 25,000 units of vitamin A in the green one ounce of dandelion greens? I had no idea. I learned that last night in my herbal class and I'm like, all the other benefits of dandelion, how it helps with your livers and your kidneys. And I'm never, ever mowing dandelions again. I'm going to pick them all. You're going to see me out in the yard picking dandelions constantly. Another zinnia mix. It's just a general zinnia. Breakaway Hempstead, hello. Is it a bad thing if I get celery from a local market in, it, it scrolled, in throat and water and reproduce it? I don't see why that would be bad. Nasturtiums multiply too. Yes. I love nasturtiums. They're just so pretty. Um, cumin. I use a lot of that. We eat a lot of like curry and stuff. So I'm going to try it. I think we tried we tried it from like a transplant before, but I've never tried to grow cumin from seed. So I'm going to try it. One of the things that I'm also learning is with my heart issues that I was having with the blood clots that I'm trying to reduce my salt intake and replace it with herbs that can still flavor things and make me not feel like I'm missing salt. 
So we're trying that. Some English lavender. Can never have too much lavender. Also hard to grow from seeds. Also take forever to grow. But we're going to try it. Somebody can do it. So I figure we can try at least. If you fry them when they're closed, they taste like mushrooms. Oh, that's interesting. Dandelion wine. Dandelion jelly. I want to do some like tinctures. And there was a video from someone I watched not too long ago. She did a dandelion, like a shortbread cookie or something that I want to try. So there may be a video coming out about that. Lavender has to be cold stratified. Yeah. I wonder if it would help with kidney stones. I mean, there are herbs out there that, that do help your kidneys. Dandelion, honestly, dandelion, the more I read about it, is probably my favorite wild herb because of how like every part of the dandelion is good for you in some way. So, I mean, I can like you've seen the the materia magica that I'm putting together for all the herb stuff that I'm learning. I'll definitely have a part for dandelion in there for you. And it's actually one of the ones. Um, a video I watched yesterday for my next module in this herb class. She lists all the herbs that she's going to focus on for this course. It was like 15 to 18 herbs, and one of them was specifically dandelion. So if she recommends that as the, a great starter herb, then, then why not? What? I said, how about that? Catnip. Just ignore me, as always. Catnip. My favorite tomato of all time, ever. Black creme tomatoes. This is my absolute favorite. This and black cherry. But I just, I can't have too many black cream tomatoes. I just love them. I'll eat them off the vine. I actually grew up hating tomatoes. I never liked eating them. But I think it's because I always grew up with like grocery store tomatoes or something. Well, then my grandmother grew them. So maybe I just, I don't know. I like black cream. I like the purple tomatoes. So. Mugwort. Never grown mugwort. Want to grow it. So we're going to try it. Yes, black cherry. I will literally sit there in the garden and eat them like candy. I love the black cherry. Oreo barn cat loves this catnip. Yeah, catnip is very easy to grow, and it's very easy to neglect and bring it back from near death. <laughs> I learned that when I was living on the naval base with my first husband. One of the only plants I had in the apartment on base that we lived was catnip. And a lot of times, like, I'd go home and visit my dad, and then i come back, and it's like looks like it's dead. I pull water on it, it comes back. So it was very easy for me to neglect my catnip. Roman chamomile. This is another chamomile was another herb that um, uh, is really good and is actually safe to use on on babies and infants that I learned in the herbal class last night. So I'm excited about that. Did you see the sweetheart cherry tomatoes? No, those sound really good. Or maybe I'm just thinking sweet, like sweet cherry tomatoes. I don't know. I'll have to try them. I have to look them up too. Hauled a steer into the butcher today. Can't wait to get him back. Man, I wish I could have cattle here. Yeah, you'd have to keep that in your room, Orion, I think. And then maybe dry it and then just kind of sprinkle it around every now and then for them. They will get into it and lay on it and kill it. So just to keep that in mind. But they will love it. Um, new type. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. Sweet marjoram. I actually only use this for one dish, but I want to use it for more dishes, so I got some. I use it for my butternut squash soup, which I have not done a video on yet. I should do a video on that. It's a really good soup. It's one of my favorite soups ever. Never thought I would like butternut squash soup, but I do. Me neither. Yeah, there's our affiliate link for Mary's Earlham Seeds where we got these. Some more oregano. Love the smell of oregano and use it a lot in mm -hmm. our cooking. Especially love it in just scrambled eggs with just a little oregano on top. It's really good. Angus and one Jersey heifer. My grandfather raised black Angus. That was his thing. He was a beef farmer. Um, so I really like I really like black Angus. Isn't marjoram just kind of a mild oregano? I think so, but I'm going to grow it anyway, because <laughs> I love oregano. I love basil, too. I think basil, 
Basil's probably my favorite leafy herb. So this is crystal. There's not like my favorite herb. It's my favorite leafy herb, my favorite. Well, I like all the herbs. Kitchen herb, my favorite garden herb. Yeah. Vineyard says they have three cows, newest farm animal, blah, blah, blah. We have one issue. Do you talk about cattle on your channel? Big Bear also talks about cattle on their channel, too. We have highlands and thinking of harvesting ourselves. Wonder if it would be easier to just send them out. I would love to learn to do cattle, but that seems like a community project. Or if you have a lot of kids that are strapping young farm boys or something. Like, I can't imagine you and me killing a cow and trying to skin it ourselves. Oh, I'd do it. Well, you try it. But we'd, we'd, we'd butcher it. <laughs> but -dum -bum. But -dum -bum. <laughs> we'd butcher it. In some way. Oh, okay. If we're, if we're going to see power from margarine is a good option. We also got some lemon bee balm. Donald loves lemon stuff. But this actually, I think this is one that's in Rosemary's list too. I like lemon, lemon bee balm. Smelled. I mean, what was it? Lemon basil we tried. But to me, it smelled like pledge. So, I mean, maybe I'll try it. But it was the lemon basil. I just couldn't get past the pledge smell. You didn't have to cook with it. I did it for the lemon. I know, but yeah. this is one that has herbal benefits and stuff. So I'm going to try the bee balm and see if I like that. But you don't have to cook with it. Though. I just did it for the lemon stuff. I'm going to smear it on your face. I've done a couple hogs on my channel. Okay. Creeping time. Love some time. We have tons of time going on right now. Can't have too many. I love thyme. Thyme is one of those classic flavors that just reminds you of like your grandmother's cooking. Like thyme is like that and sage I think is like that for me. When I smell thyme, I'm immediately back to like my grandmother and I like a good turkey soup or something. <clears throat> did our own chickens and deer but not a cow. Yeah, we did our own chickens and rabbits this year. That's mostly what we do. Eventually we'll probably do goats but I have a problem with falling in love with my goats. So we're not butchering any of the ones we got. If we did, it would be Jolene. But I don't know. I just they're like my they're like my kids. So I have to figure that out. My grandfather had Hereford and my dad had Angus, so we ended up with some mixes too. Nice. So it's timeless. No, it's definitely not timeless. Yeah, time rosemary is really good too. I love the smell of rosemary and lavender. Lemon balm is what makes Melissa oil. What is Melissa oil? That sounds interesting. I like thieves oil, but I've never heard of Melissa oil. So whorehound, good for uh, like cough drops and stuff. Very easy to grow. Ours came back every year until we dug up that area. Goat's eyes give me the creeps. They are kind of creepy. I think Orion tells me that too when I send photos to him and some of my friends and my goats. They're like, their eyes are really creepy. Melissa oil is extremely potent and good for so many things. Very expensive. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Uh, rum and tomatoes. I just really like uh, making sauce out of these. So I've done the Amish paste and a couple other paste tomatoes, but the Romas, I don't know. I just really like them. So that's what I'm sticking with. That's my story. So I got two more in our package, and this is just this first order that we've gotten. We're still planning to get a couple things that people were out of, but my second favorite tomato, black cherry. And then our last one is some German chamomile. We're going to try both varieties and see how they do. I always have trouble doing chamomile. For some reason it dies on me. At least that's the old house. I don't think we tried to grow it here. So that is our Initial seed haul. Now all the other stuff like cabbages and lettuces. We have tons of different varieties of lettuce already that we have seeds for. Um, we have tons of cabbage. Um, I think we've got some red Brussels sprouts I plan to grow and things like that. We're actually going to start planting seeds tomorrow, I think, of some of the stuff that's going to be the cold hardy or the sp that stuff that can't be grown in the summer like some of your brassicas. Plus, it's going to snow tomorrow, so if I'm going to be inside, I might as well be in inside dirt. So we'll probably film a little bit of that, of what we're planting. Yeah, chamomile is hard to grow. I have to figure that one out. 
took all the dried lavender flowers off of the stems and make some infused oil and keeping some for cooking and teas. Yeah. I love lavender for so many different things. Um, I think the main thing I want to use it for is like a nighttime tea or something to help me sleep. But Melissa oil is by doTERRA. Very pricey, but supposed to be very good. Oh, okay. See, I don't know doTERRA stuff very well. I know that Big Bear, Robin at Big Bear is a seller of the doTERRA stuff. And I would love to get more of it because I know they have, when I've been over Finnegan Strings house, it's actually a friend here locally of mine who is an exquisite violin player. Like she teaches violin. She got a full scholarship. Like she is so talented, but she has like the hand wash of the thieves oil. And I just love that. I would love my house to smell like that constantly. So do they sell anything that makes like incense thieves oil or something? That would be amazing. My chamomile did best here when I sewed it in the fall and overwintered it. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll try some now and then maybe I'll try some in the fall or something. Anise and hyssop tea. See, I don't like anise tastes kind of like a licorice, right? I think that's something like I'm not a big licorice flavor. Honestly, my favorite herbal or flowery tea is hibiscus. I'm addicted to hibiscus and I have like a hibiscus hawthorn mix that I take because hawthorn is really good for the heart. And I have those heart issues that I've been dealing with. So I'm really interested in learning more about heart herbs too and take them like constantly help strengthen my heart a little bit if I can. Black licorice. Yeah, I also learned recently through this book actually, I'll show you this one book I've been reading. The Rodale, Twi uh, two family actually found this for like two bucks on some some thrift store thing. But they mentioned there's a doctor in here that talks about licorice. Apparently, because I was looking up stuff for edema because part of my heart issues is I have uh, some edema issues lately. So I don't want to take anything that helps me preserve water. I want to lose water. So like chickweed and natural diuretics. Licorice is the opposite of that. And apparently there's like an old wives tale about licorice that if you take enough of it, or consume enough licorice, you can go without water for 10 to 12 days, which is unheard of because you, naturally you can't go more than three days without consuming water. So Mrs. Naked Gardener got that book last week. Yeah, this is really good. So there's a doctor in here that talks about that theory. And basically because it helps you retain water, if you consume enough of it, now it might be really extending your body to its breaking point, but you could go theoretically a good amount of time without water if you consumed enough licorice, which I thought was interesting, mm -hmm. which means I don't want to drink or eat licorice at all anyway, because I'm trying to like, reduce my water, uh, water weight because of the, the heart issues I've got. So, but I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that there was a wives tale that actually has some legs behind it. Yeah. We want our soil to have water retention, not us. Yes. See how I did that? That was weird. See how I worked that in there? Yeah. It's pretty good. Tea for my liver to counter pretty the alcohol, stuff. right? Um, let's see. We bought our hibiscus from Junk Seed and it was beautiful. Holy girl hibiscus. Yeah, there's one particular hibiscus I want to try. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, but we really we had a hibiscus and I think it died last year. So our goal is to pretty much I have no limit on how much hibiscus I want to grow. I want to grow tons of it because I want to dry all of it and make teas out of it. Plus hibiscus helps you with some weight loss too. So wouldn't mind getting down some pounds. That's really cool info about the licorice. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, in that book that I discovered it. But I like this one because well, Juan Rodale is a very um, well-respected source on growing in general. So having their illustrated guide to herbs. Um, I think I found this at a thrift store for just like a buck or something. Um, yeah, I think we were supposed to go to one of their... Uh, we meant to go to a thing. It wasn't last year. It was the year before, I think. Because they're in... I think they are in Pennsylvania, Rodale. I think you're thinking of um, Seed Saver Exchange. We wanted to go to one of their things, too. 
Now we did, we went to the Mother Earth News Fair a couple years ago over in Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, which is near Pittsburgh. So it was like two or three hours from here. And Seed Saver Exchange was there and we learned a lot from them. I would love to go to their location, but it's just, a, it's a bit of a haul. Take care, Twinbrook Acres. Thank you for stopping by. Hey, two family. Hi, Daryl. Um, I dried hibiscus to flavor my kombucha. It's really nice. I love the flavor. I made a big, like, two-gallon jug of hibiscus tea that was with a little bit of, like, honey and um, lemon. It was like drinking ambrosia. I, like, it's literally my favorite drink flavor now. I just don't have any. Eastern PA. Eastern PA. Kim, I don't know if you're still here, but if you are, the next time Rodale, like I know we still go to, to Horn Farm with you for some of their herbal stuff. Um, and I do want to do that too. But when they start having workshops again, road trip, just saying. One of our cows has warts and we are worried that it will spread to the other two. I don't know anything about cows, but I do know that about our goats had, well, Blue had um the ORF. What was it called? Sore mouth. Sore mouth. Four. So it's <laughs> it's like goat herpes, I guess, along the mouth, and it's transmutable to humans. And his whole chin was just a black, crusty, bloody mess, and he had like some pustules. Now it's all gone now. It takes six to eight weeks. I think his was gone in like five mm -hmm. or so. So I'm not sure when we can touch him again, but he's looking so much better. I'm going to show a video of the before. I'll need to get an after. But it was so gross. I was like, oh, one of my goats has like goat herpes or something. It would be easier to take them to butcher. Oh, they're still talking about cows. I have seeds for Roselle hibiscus set aside to send you this week. Oh, Shayla is my savior. Shayla, do you want any woad? I've got tons of woad that a friend gave me um, that died of a stroke a couple years ago. I mean, I got like a bowl full of woad seeds. If anybody wants woad, let me know. I got tons. I'm going to plant some this year as well for like dyes. Anybody that does any like dyeing or yarn dyeing or something, let me know. I've got tons of woad. Blue, right? And, yeah. Yeah. If you like that, it's that whole like the from Braveheart, kind of like that blue dye stuff that and the skin stuff um, is woad. Like an old Celtic dye thing. So we have a lot of people that because we do a lot of like, how do I word it? <laughs> um, Indo European. How do I say it? Festival? No, like not. Festival. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. <clears throat> we are big into old medieval Renaissance type. Um, mythologies let's put it that way um so we do a lot of like celtic reconstructionist research viking reconstructionist research basically all the indo-europeans of the time periods where you would expect like vikings and celts and greeks and hellenics and stuff so we do a lot of research into that which is one of the reasons why we have the woad but if anybody was does want woad let me know we've got plenty I'm off to sleep. Good to see your faces. See you too, Kim. Take care. I miss you guys. Big Bear wants some. Okay, so I'm going to set some aside for Big Bear. And making lemonades would like some. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. It grows. It grew very easy. I, I neglected it a lot, and it just went, It was big yellow um, flowers, and then I saved the seeds from that. So Now I have never made woad out of it. I should try to make woad sometime. How did you find the antifungals? I would have the vet come out and check. Okay, we're still talking about the cows. So what else we got going on this week? So we had our shed pad installed. If you guys follow us on Instagram, <clears throat> the I think they're done building it. So I'm trying to convince them, like you don't have to wait till February 15th to deliver it. If it's convenient, you can deliver it sooner to get it off your lot. I don't know that they're going to take me up on it, though. It's my drink. They could be just backed up on the delivery. They could be backed up on the delivery. But as soon as it gets here, my cousin's coming over to install the electricity. 
And then Donald and I are going to put in insulation. I got to pick out flooring. I'm trying to decide. I'm probably going to make the walls a lighter color, so I might make the floor dark. Um, I kind of, I kind of, I'm honestly, I'm kind of going for like an old cottage witchy vibe in it. So like herbs and vintage furniture and I don't know. I still have to, oh, I'm so excited. Like I'm going to live in it essentially. Like when I'm recording music, when I'm working, Donald, we're going to have a TV in there. So when dad, dad's in here watching like Perry Mason or something, we can go out there and watch stuff and not you know disrupt dad being able to have the tv um so yeah i kind of and actually it was funny someone recommended someone was asking on one of the youtube groups that we're all in um if anybody knows of any youtubers that have like this cottage core vibe and someone actually suggested us i was surprised like i hadn't gone for that vibe i love that vibe so i think we're gonna now that I'm thinking about it with the studio, I kind of want to go with this whole cottage witch core vibe thing. I think it'd be really cool. Plus, if I'm going to be working all day, I want to be surrounded by things that inspire me and smell good and make me feel like, like give me ideas for videos for our channel, which I think that would. Just research the different oils. We did Melaleuca. Geranium, lemongrass, and I think we use eucalyptus and frankincense. Nice. What are we trading the wood for? Goats. Oh. Uh, I, I really she, want a male unneutered goat. <laughs> the two males we have are neutered. Yeah, she's That's like, my only issue. What do you want to trade for it? Just, or just let me know what you want to trade for it. And I was like, well, you, you just got some new goats, right? <laughs> That would be a lot of woad. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, if you have any hibiscus, I really want some hibiscus. If you have any turmeric or ginger, I really want turmeric and ginger. Well, no, we're going to try to grow turmeric this year. Well, I have to find it. Like, oh, I'm going to find it. Baker Creek's been out. I checked I'm, today I'm, even. They're I'm, out. I, I know some people. Who do you know? Let you me know check. me. I and know, I know, I know people. other people. Who do you know people? Google? I know Google. I don't know. Amazon. Let's see. Amazon. Um, anything on that list that I posted on the group, I have to find it. Oh, I'm not going to talk about this in specific detail today, but I'll actually, I'll, I'll talk about one of them. So my dad was searching through his like stuff in his room and he found two things. One of them I may read in a video on our channel and it was stuff that I wrote when I was a kid about dad and I was reading this to Donald on the way to Starbucks today and I just started bawling which is why I'm not reading it right now yeah I mean I, I thought it was a little rude that she was bawling because I couldn't even understand the story because she was crying so much shut up but it's really well, well written I forgot I had written this for dad and he said when he found it he was crying for half an hour so I can't read it now because I'll cry, but I will read this at some point on the channel because I would like to preserve this. And it's from a viewpoint of me when I was like a teenager about my dad um, and how he raised me. So that's going to come up at some point. But then he also found this cute little thing like my dad by Crystal Groves, like where you fill in answers to these questions from um, elementary school. Where did you post the list? I posted on the Homesteaders Herbal Study Group. It was a list of herbs that um, Rosemary Gladstar is having us start with on this course. So there are some there that I don't have. One of them is not is licorice, but I'm not going to experiment with that one for me because of my heart issues. And Dad really shouldn't have it either because of his. Any organic star, store and it will grow. So you think I could just buy some from the grocery store and I can grow it from that maybe? What is like a, the root cuttings? Yeah. Yeah. Could try that. We bought our ginger and turmeric at Jung Seed and we got them last year as root cuttings and they both took off, but they need shade and humidity. I'm looking through Jung Seed now. Interesting. So, my dad by Crystal Rose, apparently. So, the five words that I apparently I thought described my dad when I was in elementary school were nice, 
tall, great, the best, strong, and funny. That's more than five words, though. I'm proud of my dad when he tries his best. I thought that was really sweet. Calendula and Yero. I did buy some Calendula. I don't have any Yero. Um, there was, I think there was a couple more on that list that I didn't have. Can you look it up real quick? What am I looking at? In the Homesteaders Herbal Study course. That's a group. Miss. You missed guitar singing. I know. I want to do it again, but I'm going to wait till I get monetized and then I'll do it. Book of remedies. So if anybody feels like running our channel, I think we're like 13 to 1400 hours away from being monetized. We still got a way to go. Uh, here you go. Jesus. Do I need, do I need to type it? What do you ask? No, me? let me see the list. So which ones we don't have? Um, I don't have burdock. I could always use elderberry. We have two, three, three oh, elderberry yeah. plants now, but I want more. Which I don't have any plants? ginger. I don't have any garlic. I don't. We have one yarrow plant, but that's it. We want we want lots more because yarrow is another one that I'm going to discuss in the herbal study group that is way more powerful than I thought it was. I don't have any nettle. If anybody's got nettle, I would love to have some nettle. Um, and I don't have any hawthorn or valerian. Or milky oats. I don't know that we can really grow oats here. We might be able to grow a little bit of oats here, but apparently that's a very potent, like good for skin and and stuff like that. So I might grow it as like a cover crop kind of thing. I assume lemon balm and lemon bee balm is the same thing. It would make sense. So those are the ones we don't have. We do have echinacea. We could always use more echinacea, but I don't have any burdock, and I can always use lavender, I guess. Really, any herbs, I'm not going to be disappointed with at all. Let's put it that way. Because we plan to grow way more than what we've got available now entirely. Yes, I would love nettle. I have Queen Cerise Yarrow. Yeah, anybody that wants to trade some wood for some herb seeds, I'm all about it. I have one of those from elementary school for my youngest. He framed for me a couple years ago for Father's Day hanging on my bedroom wall. And he just graduated and still gets me. Yeah. This one's pretty cute. The other one's way worse. Like my dad always says Galatimba. This was a word I always grew up with him saying. Didn't make any sense to me, but apparently it's from an old show in the 50s, uh, like a Tarzan show. And that's what he would call somebody in that show. And it just stuck with my dad. So he, he says that when he wants someone to get out of the way, he says Galatimba. It's just a weird word that he has. Yeah, Burdock and Netta would be great. Create your own song and let's hear it. I do want to. I actually plan to create one from the one that made me cry because it was done. So it was really good for a teenager. Apparently there are two different herbs, by the way. Oh, they are? Okay. So I need some lemon balm. I had the Jiffy Peat pods and trying the Fairy Morse heat pads. Okay. Don't have burdock, cawthorn, or valerian. I got to check that list again. Yeah, I'm going to do another seed order soon for the ones that I don't have from that list because I think we're supposed to have, like I want to grow those are I think we're also supposed to have some to experiment with during this course and so I'm going to have to buy some already pre-dried just to do the homework for this herbal course um now Rosemary does give her students discount codes for like mountain rose herbs we get a discount code and things like that so I will be ordering some dried stuff so I don't need this stuff immediately but I do want to start growing it as I learn about the properties and I don't know. Like, let me pull my book up. Currently, according to this, lemon bee balm is lemon mint. My apothecary book from my notes. Oh, it's lemon mint. Yeah. So I did that one video yesterday, and there was a really good stuff about some of these herbs that I wanted to go over at some point. Oh, another thing that I learned. So dandelion and nettle both have essentially, I think it's the trace minerals. One of the things we were looking at is we take some electrolyte um, flavoring like Mio's to put in our drinks so that we get our electrolytes because when I don't have enough electrolytes, I get really bad leg cramps. So I have to have electrolytes of some sort or trace minerals or something. I want to start taking like magnesium, like Epsom salt baths and things like that. 
but you can get trace minerals from the root of dandelion and from nettles. So if I can start growing these, drying these, and in, incorporating them in hibiscus tea, then I might not have to buy these synthetic electrolytes, which is a goal of mine. I don't want to buy them anymore, but I have to have the electrolytes. And I can't have too much salt. <laughs> so I need to really focus on like the magnesium and the trace minerals, not so much like Himalayan salt and stuff like that, if that makes sense. I might be behind the course until we move because I banned Sid from growing stuff. <laughs> it's fine, I'm still on lesson one. Um, it was less than one unit 12 where she lists the herbs for us to study. And I, it's one of the reasons I posted that list was that people that did kind of want to follow along and actually mama Z, can you grab a link to the herbal group from Facebook and post it here? Anybody that wants, like, it's not just for people that are doing the course because I mean, the herbal education that we're getting from the course is universal. Like I'm not going to share specific resources that she provides to the students and I'm not going to copy and paste her course descriptions out of respect for people. You know, we paid for this course and I want her to, you know, get money from this course. But the herbal knowledge, like what elderberry and stuff's good for it, is not restrictive. So I can share what I learn. I just can't share like how I learn it, if that makes sense. So anybody that wants to learn and study herb stuff, join that group. Um... I was gonna try to find, so lemon balm. Apparently beekeepers love it because bees love it. It's an antiviral. It's also an antiviral for your bees when they consume, oh. consume that. So it's a good health um, nectar for your bees. bees. It's very potent and it's called an, it's a nerving herb. And nerving means that it's an herb that helps with your nervous system. Um, it's calming relaxing. It's one of the strongest antivirals that people use for herpes and shingles. Mm. Like I didn't realize that. So you can use lemon balm if you start getting like you would add other things to it. But before, like I learned that the herbal med medicine genre really went underground in the forties when they started coming out with a lot of this commercial medicine. And then it only started coming becoming a resurgence of herbal medicine, probably in the eighties and nineties. And even more so now people are getting into herbal medicine, but throughout the like forties to like 2000, it was kind of like hidden. And I want to say it was probably religious in some way too. Um, so, you know, now we're getting all this herbal knowledge again, but before, you know, it went underground in the forties, this is all people had to use for medicine. So when people had shingles and herpes, they would use lemon balm, which I thought was really cool. So there's the group. Mama Z posted that Facebook group link. That is my herbal study group that I started that I'm sharing the knowledge of what I'm learning. And even the Materia Magica, when I'm done, I'll post that as well. Um, and we're just right now I'm picking one herb a month to really focus on, but we can discuss all the herbs throughout the month. It's just this month we're focusing on cayenne. Next month, I'm actually going to be focusing on rose for beauty type stuff. And I think March, I have Majorums scheduled to go out. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be a lot of study in that group. So yarrow, I didn't realize how powerful yarrow was, just to give you guys a glimpse. Thor's Haven, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, yarrow is a diaphoretic. It helps you sweat. So if you get like a cold or a fever, um, taking yarrow, if you if you need to sweat out toxins from being sick, that's what you would take. Yarrow is apparently so good. For, this is one of the reasons why I really want yarrow. Um, it soothes muscle cramps, which is another reason I want it because women that are getting their monthly period and they get cramps from that, or if you're someone like me that gets a lot of leg cramps for some reason or another, yarrow is good for muscle cramps. I didn't know that. Um, it's also one of the big components in that gypsy cold care tea that you get in the store, which is actually a formula that Rosemary Gladstar created when she worked for or started the company that does the gypsy cold care tea. So I didn't know that. What's the cost of the course? Um, until January 15th, it was what I paid $275. I think it might have gone up since then, unless she's extended the deal. I'm not sure. 
but it's worth it. Um, I think so far. Um, I think I put the link in the book when I'm done her course or in the group that was up there. I plan to do the chestnut school of medicine, which is I think based out of North Carolina. Um, and then when that one's done, I'm going to take the herbal course from the herbal Academy, which I link in that group also. Hey, Tim Karen Gardner and bomber Steve. Is there a link on here? There's a link. Do where? I have a link somewhere? It's not there, um, but Mama Z posted the link earlier if you want to grab it. The stream yard? No, the one above that. Yarrow is apparently also um, good for first aid in that if you do a poultice, it'll actually help you stop bleeding. It's a one of those herbs that kind of like um, plantain, which is considered soldier's work. At least that's what they call it here in Gettysburg, where they did a lot of the... Um, we have a Civil War hospital two doors down. Like there's still blood stains on the floor of this Civil War hospital. It was a Confederate hospital. But um, like plantain that you see everywhere um, is also another one that helps to stop bleeding. So yarrow apparently is really good for that. And it can work internally as well. So if you've got like um, bleeding ulcers or something like that, taking yarrow can actually help stop the bleeding internally as well as externally. Um, it's also good for where there's congested blood, like bruising. So if you have bruising really bad somewhere, it can help with, um, healing that as well. I didn't know that. Well, that was really cool. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the initial research that I was doing on Yarrow for the herbal course. But I mean, Rosemary Gladstar, it was, it was within my budget to start out with. And it's just, so far it's really really a good course. So I'll, I'm still only on lesson one though. So, um, Kito him so with Jess. Hello. Welcome. Miss any other comments? Yeah. I don't know how to copy that one because it's cut off. Well, just click on it, open it up and copy the link in your browser. <laughs> oh, I forgot to use, I was going to use StreamYard today too. I forgot. I signed up for StreamYard recently for actually for my business, um, my digital agency, um, because I'm starting to do more and I'm about to do another channel on, um, website and social marketing reviews. So I'm going to use StreamYard for that, but I was going to create a nice little like banner and stuff for this and then didn't do it. So maybe I'll do that next time. So this one. Yarrow helps with ingest ingestion and gas problems. Yeah. I didn't know that. She hadn't no, gotten on that yet. So Donald just posted the link to that herbal group. So join that. You'll see a list of the courses that we've discussed in there. Um, and then all the stuff that I'm learning, I'm kind of throwing in there too to share. This year's already costing me a bit taking a hog and a steer to butcher. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to take it this year. You can take it next year, but you can get a head start by joining that group too, just to kind of see what we've been discussing. The Lala Farm did a StreamYard how-to live today. It was worth a watch. I'll have to check that out. I actually did a StreamYard live on... Mama Z posted it earlier. My business, my marketing agency, I do have a channel and a Facebook page and I had it streaming live on both. Um, I was going over a new social network for people that are um, against the censorship issues that have been going on. So I did a live kind of walkthrough of some of these new social networks. If you want to check those out. Um, I was using StreamYard for that just to try it out. I really like it. Um, but yeah, we're heading towards the end of our live. Yeah. There's my digital agency. You'll see social media links at the bottom of that page. So you can subscribe to my business, uh, YouTube that I'm starting up. Um, one of them, I'm going to have two of them, but I haven't put the other one linked up yet. And, um, I'm doing all kinds of marketing tips, how to's and things like that on there. So check that out. You're going to join the group for sure. Awesome. Donald, do you have anything you wanted to say? I feel like I've been talking this whole time. If you say no. ditto or what's up, I swear to God. No, yeah, you've been pretty, you said it pretty well. It's pretty good. Oh, shh. <laughs> but that's all we got going on. This week is mostly just... What are we doing next weekend? Next weekend? Um, 
We're probably going to just spread hay in the garden. Chicken I think coop, I'll garden. Work on the chicken coop. Tomorrow it's supposed to snow. We, we're, we're filming filming a little bit. I, I will have a, we did put the video showing that new indoor greenhouse set up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I will have another video out this week. Theoretically too, but I don't know what the second one's going to be yet. Maybe a recipe video, but I'm doing an app review of an app that I've been using that helps you determine whether you have chemicals, like bad chemicals in some of the products you use. So I'm going to show you guys that. I think you guys will like it. And it's a free app. I love it. But. Aw, thank you, Skinner. Yeah, Donald's going to poop, probably. Are you, are you making fun of me? She called you out. <laughs> ah, I think that's about it. It's it's kind of like we're we're ramping up to start planting. We will doing we will be doing some seed planting this week. So well, I guess that's one thing. One hundred and four tomorrow. Well, he's in Australia. Well, that's what I mean. One hundred and four. That's crazy. In January. It was. I think I woke up to eighteen degrees this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Fahrenheit. So there's that. Are we? Your friends over here. Oh, because you jacked it. And jack your phone. Oh. I'll jack your face. Um, let me see. What, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, I found this cookbook, by the way, guys. I might play around with this some. Grandma's recipes from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Mama Z, do you see this? I think I showed you this once before, but I'm real excited. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be 82 here in Florida today. Mid 30s. Mid 30s? Yep. Hey, they have an old macaroni and cheese recipe in here, Donald. 30 to 38. What? Ooh. It involves flour. That seems weird, but maybe. I don't know. Griddle cakes. So, Mama Z, I'll have to show you. <laughs> I'll have to show you that one. I see her. OMG. Mama G. Oh, is that the one we get from uh, Round Barn? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got that one from Round Barn. Um, it's all good. I was predicted to 108, so it's been downgraded a bit. Jeez. Yeah, I think at that point, probably every degree helps. Yeah. I remember one time I was working in Maryland, and it got to 113 degrees. It was higher. We were actually listed as highest in the United States that day. In fact, the power lines that were over my car melted and landed on my car at that point in time. We were we were hotter than what's that desert out west that's supposed to be really hot? The hot the desert. Ma, the M, Mojave Desert. We were literally hotter than the Mojave Desert that day. That's crazy. Yeah, we have we have a, a ninety percent chance of snow tomorrow. They're supposed to get like six. I love inches. snow. Yeah, six to eight inches of snow. I'm all about some snow. I like snow until it gets like icy. Or muddy. Like I like it, it when it's fresh. And then it can F off. Because then I'm going to fall on my butt. And I don't want to do that. So. All right, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out with us for this hour. It's always appreciated. Um, we will have another video out. Jason said he's almost home. Awesome. I wonder if Jason was watching. He probably wasn't watching. Um, we will have another video out this week. Theoretically, too. One of them might be a recipe because there's not really a whole lot else going on, but we'll see. I might do a, just a general farm vlog. But if there's ever anything that you guys want us to show you how to do, Donald has been preparing, and we had a big, long discussion this morning when we were waking up about his soil education videos that he wants to do. And I'm so excited when he was telling me his ideas for you guys. So I really, really want him to do these videos. I'm going to harass him to finish these, these outlines of these videos he wants to do. So be looking for those soon as well. Yeah, because I have to roll it in because I, I ended up geeking out on a lot of the topics. I'm like, well, now I can't have the video like an hour long. Talk about dirt for an hour. So we're like, we're going to do like three or four videos, this, this, this. Yeah. But anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up before you leave. And uh, keep an eye out. Hit subscribe and hit the bell because that alerts you when we put out a new video. And then you won't miss all the glory that is Copper Cove Farms. Really, really, really me. Really just Donald. Awesome. See you guys next week. Take care. Be safe. Peace. Plant some stuff.